Hi, I'm Anna Peterson, and you're watching the Permanent Rate Press. Hi everyone, it's Chloe with the Permanent Rain Press today. I am so excited to be joined by Anna Peterson. How are you? I'm good. Hi. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful weather here in Sweden. I'm stuck inside. <laughs> I'm sure you'd much rather be outside, but you may or may not have been outdoors um, last night filming. I know we can't talk about spoilers for the show that you were just uh, filming, but we will be talking about Young Royals in a bit. But I, I just have to say you've been highly requested as a guest to come on and do this interview with us. So I'm really grateful that you could find the time. Of course, I was uh, I was overwhelmed and surprised like they actually want to listen to me. I'm just a nobody in the in the cast or in the show. I'm just, you know, in the shadows. So I was just, okay, yeah. Oh, I, I can do that. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah. They say, it. what is it in show business? There are no small parts. So I think that that really applies here. And a lot of fans just love your character and are interested in hearing more about your thoughts. And okay. um, we'll get into that. But I wanted to start off with your background in security because it spans mm -hmm. many years. So what kinds of positions have you had in the past and what motivates you to do this kind of work? Uh, okay, so there are different kinds of security in, in Sweden. Obviously, you have the police force and all different departments in there. But there's also private security. You have uniform security. You have uh, uniform security that checks the subways, the malls, and just, you know, general security for the public. And then you have the uniform armed security where they, they take care of different uh, establishments or houses. And obviously, you have the close protection side as well where you don't wear a uniform. And I've done pretty much all of them uh, because I've been around for, for a while. Um, yeah. And what what motivated to do this? Uh, I Well, when I was a kid, I saw I saw The Bodyguard with Kevin Costner. And I was like, hey, I, I, I can do that. I want to do that. So off I went. And, uh, and here I am. Uh, done it all pretty much, yeah. It's, it's interesting to hear that it was the bodyguard that kind of led you on this path. Obviously, a movie I'm sure many people, including myself, are familiar with. Um, you also did one year basic training in the army to become a soldier. Is that that's mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that was an experience? Uh, yeah, because I wanted to do is when I was uh, when I was 18 and everybody was drafted. Uh, well, the females weren't drafted because it, you know, it was back then. Uh, but I wasn't allowed to do it because I couldn't see properly. Uh, and then I had my eyes uh, lasered when I was 30. And then I had like some late 30 crisis or something. So I just, let's see what happens. So I applied and I got accepted. And and I was like, okay. Uh, hey, boss, I, I, I have something to tell you. He's like, Anna, what did you do? I'm going to join the army. He's like, okay, yeah when in five weeks okay great okay yeah uh so it was kind of a spur of a moment i always wanted to do it and it just happened and and off i went as a 32 year old into the army what kinds of memories do you have from that period oh wow um it was tough it was so tough because i did it with well first of all mainly boys and when i say boys i mean boys because they were 18 or 19 most of them and I was 32 and I was more of a, a cranky old lady because they couldn't follow time and, and they were always late and they weren't paying attention. And, and so it was definitely some, some bad memories, but once they kind of accepted me in their group because I was so much older, it was, it was a great experience to work with, with these, with these young, young adults. And, and they was just nailing it. They were killing it all the time. And I was like, Hey, wait for me, wait for me. Uh, so definitely some good memories as well. It's, it's one of the most, like best thing I've ever done the most hardest thing but definitely one of the best things yeah I guess very challenging but rewarding you would say yes, at the end of, of it course. very rewarding and you've also been a security host at some mm -hmm. concerts festivals in Sweden who is like yeah. the your favorite artist or favorite concert that you've been able to to kind of be a security at okay oh my god I don't even not sure if I'm supposed to tell tell you this but okay so I'm a, I was a huge Backstreet Boys fan, okay? Uh, and we were ha they had a show with New Kids on the Block in Malmö. And I was just a security host. And um, 
they had like the, the big the big scene and then they had um like different tongues coming out this is actually the name of the set or the stage they have different tongues coming out and we have five um five entrances at the top of the the crowd and there was one backstreet boy coming out at each each hole or in into the crowd so my job was to kind of keep the the rope uh, level with the stage so they can just walk in be, in between the ropes and I was just standing I was, I was facing the crowd and I had one backstreet guy behind me and all I could think to myself I hope it's not Brian I hope it's not Brian because if it's Brian I'm gonna lose my lose my mojo my stuff and then I turn around oh, of course it's Brian okay I know you got this you just be cool and and he actually he actually tapped me on the shoulder and winked at me I'm like oh, what is it was, it was it was me like a, a being a little girl again. And then when the show was over, I called my sister like, oh, my God, you have no idea what just happened. <laughs> so, yeah, that was definitely one of my favorite memories for sure. Uh, I also I also got the privilege to meet James Hetfield, which is the singer of Metallica. But that was when I was not I was I was still backstage, but I wasn't working at that point. And that happened this last year. Also, like a big thing for me, super big thing. But the Brian just kind of put the put the trophy on the shelf for me. That's such a kind of sweet memory to to take from, you know, you're on the job there, obviously, but you're like, oh my gosh, it takes you back to, to yeah. being like those fangirls when you were oh, younger. Yeah. Um, you kind of, you know, might have touched on this a bit in terms of the army, but I'm curious what challenges have you faced as a woman in the security industry as a whole? And do you still see there being a gender gap? Uh, of course, yeah. Uh, I mean, the... The struggles that I've had as a woman is when you're in this industry, it's mostly dominated by men. So when you do, like when you mess up, it's a big thing because, yo, Anna, she's the only girl who she messed up. But at the opposite, like I did something really good, it also explodes. Like, oh man, she's the only girl and she nailed that. So it's either kind of black and white. Uh, so it's nothing just like a gray zone for you. Either you're good or you're like bad. Uh, and and I don't really approve of that, but hey, uh, but it also has driven me and motivated me so much harder because when I am tested towards men on the shooting range or we're doing the physical tests, I always aim to make them look, I don't want to say bad, but when I do uh, achieve better than they, I, I, I get so proud and it's just like, I, it drives me and motivates me to being the only female in the group. I was looking online and there are organizations, I'm not sure if there's one specifically in Sweden, but uh, like women in international security. So there are places that really like promote um, international peace and security, but also women like in professional development, uh, mentorship, networking. So hopefully that's a career that continues to grow because I know a lot of questions from fans also comes about, you know, their fascination or maybe um, they would like to to join the security industry inspired yeah. by you and characters like Malin, of course. So it's it's nice to hear about, you know, that side and kind of your personal take on it, having been in the industry for, for some time. Yeah, but I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it has gotten so much better once when I was started when I was 20 and now I'm 36. So it's gone a bit. It's, it's a bit easier, but I'm also a bit older. I'm a bit relaxed now and I don't always take everything to heart. And that also helps. So I don't see the the man and uh, woman as strongly as I did before. Now it's just like, well, hey, you know what? I'm stronger than you. I ran faster than you and I shoot better than you. So yeah, you know, whatever. So you grow into it as well. In terms of just security, I imagine it can be very mentally, physically exhausting. So how did you take care of yourself and your body? Um, I, it's a hard question because I've always been physically active. I played soccer as a kid. Uh, and then I realized my knees are kind of, they're not, they're not dealing with it. So I got into the gym and it, when I don't go to the gym, I don't feel good. I need the gym. So that's, that's always been motivation for me. But and when you lose the motivation, you need the discipline to keep going when you just want to stay on the couch. When you need want to stay on the couch, that's when you need to go. Uh, and that is very disciplinary and you need to, you know, it's just, but just, just go, just go. And that's what you need to do. So yeah, it, it's hard work for sure.
Have you ever been stuck in like a big crowd control situation, even in your younger years at concerts or festivals? Uh, um, not that I like have any big memories. No, I mean the most threatened situations that I have been is in my pri private life as a woman, you know, roaming the streets of Stockholm or wherever I've been doing, and and there's been alcohol and. And drunk men and those are the most threatening situations that i've been in because i'm more vulnerable uh when i do security i have a uniform i have 10 guys with me or whatnot so my level of acceptance is higher when i work whereas when i'm just me it goes a bit lower and you get you get on your spiders and start tingling real really faster then uh, so i'm not much crowd control no but yeah I imagine in terms of you mentioned like, you know, personal life, like late at night that your security training really comes in handy in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. But not necessarily in a good way, because doing what I do, I'm very colored from my work and that gets my spider sense of tingling maybe a bit too fast. And I get too defensive too fast when someone's actually like, excuse me, do you know what the time is? And then I'm already I'm, I'm already with my mace and I'm, I'm you know. Um, you know, or I'm looking for ways to exit. And it, just, it takes a certain amount of energy of you to always have the spider senses on. You know, sometimes I wish I was just a normal person, like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> so definitely balancing the the good parts, but also that, that restraint a bit, because you mentioned it's like you're hypersensitive and active mm. to, to any kind of movements or advances around you. Sometimes, uh, yeah. Yeah. Is your current position in, in security, but on the ad administrative side? Mm -hmm. before yeah so so this is the answer that i am going to be a bit more vague about because this is my current current yes. employer <laughs> uh and i don't want to be too descriptive but yeah it's a uh, i do add, add, add admin a lot of the times i mean there's different departments in my company and i still do the operate operative things uh, as well uh but i am uh, spending a lot more time with my desk which i don't hate because there's always warm coffee there so it's, you're like it's not always on the field then not no, always on the field it's 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 a bit of a mix and I love it it's it's good and you have mentioned you have you know a great employer a great boss who lets you take time off for filming although for season three it might have been I know a bit more difficult you were like I'm not sure if I can do it and fans were like no you have to come back I know no my boss has been super great and uh, the only thing that has clashed is because I had to travel on those specific dates with work and my boss is like Anna I need you to do this because I'm the only one who can do this because he has other stuff to do uh, so when these dates were kind of jumped at me I'm like oh crap I can't do this so uh, but all the other day we've been we've been puzzling and and putting uh, yeah so we're, we're making it work and he's been really great thank god that's really awesome because it allows you to have, you know, all these kind of new experiences, especially since, you know, you started Young Royals, um, I think it was fall, winter 2020. So it's been some time and you'd like to kind of see this project through. Uh, you are not a full time actor, though, but you have worked behind the scenes as a runner and location scout prior to starring as Malin and Young Royals. Tell me about your friend who offered you kind of this role. And did you ever have any reservations about taking this part, having been away from the entertainment industry for some years? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, no reservations. I jump rightly at it. Uh, but that friend, actually, he's, uh, he's an old boyfriend. Uh, he's my ex. We met on set on another movie uh, called You Are Falk. They're really big here in Sweden. And I was a police extra back then. Uh, and he was with the production and we just kind of hit it off and became boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, obviously, but we broke up because he's my ex now. Uh, but he actually called me up, he said three years ago now. It was actually on a on a Saturday night. And I, and I look at my phone, like, why is my ex calling me on a Saturday night? Hello? <laughs> so and he's like, Anna, we need a bodyguard. I'm like, you need to call the office. No, no, we. I need an actress. Can you do it? I'm like, yeah, of course I can. Yeah. And that's, that's all she wrote. Here I am. That's such a like funny story to tell because it's like, you know, had, have you two been in contact though in between yeah, that time? Definitely. Okay. We're good friends. 
Okay, so it, it wasn't completely out of the blue, but at the same time, it's funny that you immediately jump to, you know, if you need a body. It's Saturday guard. night. That's normally <laughs> when we communicate. We communicate via Instagram and with memes, uh, you know, every every third month or so. So when he actually called and picked up the phone, I'm like, okay, this is a bit outside the, the pattern of a normal. Uh, Pleasantly surprised that it was for a job offer, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was, I was, I was stoked, actually. I'm like, yes, let's do it. So because it seems a little like not conventional, what can you share about any audition casting process that you had to go through? Okay, so this was a long time ago. I don't remember it too well. I didn't realize that it was going to be such a big hit or I would have memorized it a bit more. Uh, but to my to my knowing, the, there was another actor who was, actress who was going to play Malin. So I was not the first call. And that's why he called me at 9, 9 p.m. on a Saturday evening because it was a backup thing. So it was very fast. Uh, so I, I was called into an office and I met two, two guys. One of them were doing Villa or Wilhelm and me just interacting with him in the, my in my bodyguard manners. So it was it was not really. And then I, I was out two minutes. That was it. Yeah, and then you got the call and they were like, you're hired. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm like, for um, the Wilhelm, so it wasn't um, Edwin, was it just like a body double kind of? No, thing? it was just, the, I think it was one of the, the production guys. Like, can, okay. you, can you do a scene with a girl coming in from Holland? It's like, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> just a stand-in for that day, but yeah. it seemed to have worked out. Um, they must have yeah. saw some good qualities for, well, for they you were filming as Malin. as well, so. Thank was you. it an interesting experience to kind of be in that room and have them, the camera directly on you when you were saying some lines? Yeah, I mean, I have done it once before uh, because, as you said, I was a runner for another show uh, called Bonus Familian. And uh, the, 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 I was in the office and the and the producer is like, oh, gosh darn it, we need a bodyguard. Oh, we're not, not a bodyguard. We need a guard. I'm like, here I am. I can do that. And so I did a small audition for, for that for that scene as, as a guard. So I, I'm, I'm familiar with the concept. So how much of your history and past experiences influence Malin? And would you say in some way she's an extension of yourself? I'm, I'm, I like took everything that I've uh, accu accumulated for the past 10 or 15 years in security and just put it into Malin, basically. So I'm not acting. I'm just working, but in front of the camera. So it's just a full extension of how I would work at most, most of the times anyway. What kinds of key values like and mannerisms did you take into this role? Because I know you mentioned before on Tumblr, like being armed with a weapon. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that you kind of took into in terms of the right arm over the right hip. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I definitely did that because we, we're not we're not carrying when we're when we're acting. We don't we don't have anything. So whenever uh, I have a, a jacket on and the, if there's a wind, I always try to keep my my right hand over my hip and. And as I said, everything and how I move it is just it's just me moving with Mullen. It's just how I would do it in when I work as well. In terms of the security industry, like um, what kinds of core or main values uh, is something that you have to carry with you at all times? Um, I would say, wow, that's a good question. Core values like being honest and always do right by yourself. And always look uh, over your shoulder to see who's there to help you and who hears who, who can I help. It's, it's, it's just a team thing. You're never alone in this industry. You always have somebody to take care of or somebody who can take care of you. It's, uh, yeah, and never give up. I love that. That's such a like great thing to always keep in the back of your mind, especially as yeah. you're doing like really difficult, hard, laborious work. Um, so I'm guessing because she is really an extension of yourself, did you didn't have to do much other preparation for this part? No, no, no. Because obviously, like, can you do your work but in front of a camera? Uh, yeah, I can do that. So no, no preparations really. What do you imagine Malin's backstory is like in terms of her history, um, how she began to work for the police royal court, how long she's been in security? Because I know it's just a character and you do put a lot of yourself into it. But I think and a lot of times people like to create at least form in their mind a bit of a backstory because it gives you some context for mm -hmm. who you're playing. Uh, OK, um, I kind of imagine Malin 
joining the force when she was really young, maybe 20, 21 or something. And then she just kind of worked her way up a bit. And then she found close protection and joined there. And again, probably being the only woman around, maybe two and other two, uh, two, three other women there. And you need female security uh, as well, because uh, as a female bodyguard, if you have a female client, as a man, you can't go with them into the, the locker rooms or whatnot. So having a female bodyguard is always something like, oh, we need her. Um, so I, I picture her joining the force early. And to me, she's she was recruited for the royal family early on, being who she is and being awesome and as, as a woman. Uh, so she's been with the royal family for since the dawn of time, in my, in my opinion. She's been super loyal. And she probably knows Eric as well. And she was probably devastated when, when the crash happened. And she's probably very familiar with the family. Do you imagine she's similar in age to yourself? Oh, uh, yeah. I think so, yeah. Maybe. Exact same age. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, she could either be like two or three years older or maybe younger. I don't know. It's I, have, I, haven't, I haven't really thought about her age. I love that comment about thinking she she knew Eric. So she possibly was his bodyguard for some time, mm -hmm. maybe saw the kids kind of grow up a little. Um, it yeah. would be nice to kind of have that history there. Um, fans have speculated over Mullen's sexuality. So I was curious because you have answered kind of questions on Tumblr about this, but what are your thoughts on their opinions? And do you think labels are, are not necessary for her? I mean... No, what, what, you don't need to label anything, to be honest. But I do understand that they would uh, put her in the in the in make her gay a bit because she is a bodyguard. She is a trained professional, and she's also also a bodyguard. But to make her gay as well, and for Wilhelm to have that kind of person in his in his vicinity, always close by, would kind of be the big acknowledgement for him. Like, I'm if she can do it, I can. So I think it's just. The fans needed someone, a strong character, because the queen might not always be there because she's super busy. And then we have Maul in there. Let's make her gay. Yes, she's gay, which makes perfect sense. So, yeah. I honestly love how encouraging you've been in terms of having people share their own stories um, and theories with you. And there is that natural curiosity. And like you mentioned, it's it would be a really good tie in for the story, even though we don't know for um, the facts. But there was a fan you answered recently who gave Malin's wife a name, Talia. And I, yeah. I feel like that actually like that sounds really nice together. Mm -hmm. Like that could work. For sure. Yeah. And I love how. I'm so intrigued with how intrigued they are with Malin and I get to portray her just a couple of scenes every now and then and I'm just intrigued that there are people actually engaged with Malin and I'm just like she just blows my mind so when they have like let's name her she has a name Talia okay let's name her Talia yeah that's fine yeah it's beautiful you're like where, where's the the casting for that character I mean come I on <laughs> Do you consider Malin's life outside of her job? Like, does she have any family, any additional hobbies and interests? What's her personality like? Or is it very much what you see in the show, like kind of serious doing her job? I mean, do you, do I strike you as a super serious person when we talk here? Nah, not really. <laughs> but obviously when I work, I have to put on my, my working face. And I think that's exactly the same for Molly. She she probably has a, a social life and, and a wife, obviously. Uh, I'm not sure with the kids just yet because being in uh, in being the, doing the bodyguard thing, it has a certain degree of sec like um, secrecy towards it, and that can create friction in between partners. You need to trust each other. I mean, obviously, you can't say where you're going all the time, but that you are going and you'll be back here and there. So maybe not. A big family woman i don't see that in a lot of in a lot of bodyguards actually they're mostly divorced if they have kids um unfortunately but yeah i mean maybe she plays soccer i played soccer i don't know it's just an unwritten uh sheet for her and um sky's the limit i think i just love hearing kind of being able to trying to fill in some of those blanks and those plot holes it's always nice to hear and it's something that I think sometimes is not talked about as much but you mentioned like it is hard being in security like there is a lot of trust involved obviously some sacrifice on, on the personal side of life mm -hmm. 
for sure. It's uh, it's hard work sometimes. Uh, I don't uh, I have don't have any kids. I don't have a spouse either. So, but I but I have left the body parts most most of behind me. So I'm not that uh, exposed to it anymore, and I can kind of settle in with my normal life now. Is Malin a character that you really enjoy playing? Like, is she yeah. someone that you? <laughs> I yeah. feel like I knew the answer, but I yeah. just wanted to confirm. Yeah. What's yeah, been, because, like your favorite part about, you know, playing her over these past couple of years? Uh, because I know, I know her, I know her job. I know how frustrated it can be. And uh, it's, as I said, I'm not an experienced actress in any kind of way. So I'm super comfortable with stepping into her uh, and that makes me happy. And um I don't know it's just and I get to do what I love and also in front of a camera it's just like that it's a it's a good it's a good mix of good vibes I think it's obvious that Malin knows early on about Wilhelm and Simon their romantic relationship especially after Wilhelm's drunken night on the football field Mm -hmm. why do you think she trusts Wilhelm and Simon together uh I think uh, in my opinion I think that Simon is a good influence on, on Willem because he is he has a different upraising from a very different family he knows that he can't do everything that he wants he knows there will be consequences uh, from his actions and he's probably heard no a bit more obviously Wilhelm is getting a bit fine-tuned to getting a no now because he's the crown prince but before when Eric was in the spotlight he was just this rich kid and could you know do about his business and nobody really cared and the you know the world was his oyster so uh, meeting influencing Simon with him is just like putting him that big back to earth a bit um and in my opinion I think that Simon actually called Molly when they were on the soccer field um like I can't put him on the bike we need help so that I think the trust there with Simon is just like good for you yeah yeah do you think she did any kind of background check on him before kind of allowing him into Wilhelm's space? Like um, you mentioned, you think Malin thinks he's mm-hmm. a good influence, but yeah, what other impressions do you think she has of him? Because she actually accompanied Wilhelm to Simon's home for dinner. She meets Linda. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm fairly sure that the well, there's, there's an, an intel department with the police force as well. So they probably vetted him and his family through and through to see if there's any suspicious in their background and stuff like that. Uh, so, and I think the main purpose why Marlin accompanied him all the way in, because normally she would stay outside in the car with a coworker and just making sure that Willem is safe. Uh, but she actually accompanied him in, which probably means that she wanted to meet Linda, say hi, Get a get a familiar face and maybe ex- exchange numbers because it's a lot about service as well. I mean, if there's something going on, feel free to call me. If you're worried about something, if you have questions, because it's such a big thing in your private life having security being there. You have strangers in your house, so you want to take that edge off it by introducing yourself and saying, "Hi, I'm a person as well. Here's my number." I'd like to think that they might have kept in touch a little bit. Um, what's interesting about the the whole kind of background check is um, we see in the show, unfortunately, it wasn't really explored in um, season two, but uh, Simon does have a dad who may have, you know, came across some hard times, but maybe in the intel check, they realize, you know, he didn't see his dad that often, didn't deem that to be too much of a threat. Uh, no, because that is... It's not second to Wilhelm. Simon is second to Wilhelm, and then Simon has his own background. And the 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 security is just on the succession line. So it's the queen and it's Wilhelm, and it doesn't stretch any further than that. So having uh, people looking at that side is just draining their 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 resources. They don't they can't do that. Um, that, so that but, makes um, a lot of sense in terms of um like you mentioned it's too far removed so maybe yeah. it's something that they have in a file but it's not something that's immediate it's, in their no, mind no so Malin is a bit of an observer especially you know if she spent a lot of time with the royal family with the royal court so she sees the division between the royal family and maybe a bit of how Wilhelm's feelings for Simon have affected him do you think she ever tries to talk to Wilhelm about his feelings or does she keep her distance and those personal professional boundaries? 
Um, okay, so there is always a thin line to thread here uh, uh, um, as a security officer or a bodyguard because speak when spoken to. That is the golden rule when you have a client. If they don't want to talk, don't engage them. Uh, but seeing as Wilhelm is still a child, he's not he's not 18 yet, and you have to be a bit more sensitive towards them and maybe like, hey, how's your weekend? But I do that with grown-ups as well. Like, hey, how are you doing? And if they want to engage you further, yeah, sure. And so it's a, she would probably be a bit more softer uh, with him and a bit more like, hey, how are you doing? How was your weekend? Instead of a grown-up, yeah, you good? Yep, yeah, good. Uh, yeah. It's nice to kind of have that built-in support system, like you mentioned. It's also service. You know, you're there to 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 be eyes and ears, and also listen when you need to, and if that's mm -hmm. appropriate. Uh, in the season one finale, uh, when this was kind of submitted, I think by a fan who wanted to know. Malin she walks behind Wilhelm after his talk and hug with Simon, and it looks like Malin turns back towards Simon briefly. So, were you directed to just look in his direction? or did Malin verbally say something to Simon? Uh, I wasn't directed to do anything and she didn't say anything, but it just felt for me a, the, like a normal thing to do because uh, I care about Wilhelm and by extension, I do care about Simon because not only is he a good influence, but you know it makes my client happy, happy client, happy bodyguard. So when I see Simon is upset, it would just felt natural that I would kind of like lean back and maybe try to make eye contact and just, like, I see you, I see that you're in pain, and then move on. It just felt like a natural thing to do. Take me through, this is the the pivotal scene, of course, you've talked about it, but everyone wants to hear about season two, where Malin has to forcefully pull Wilhelm oh, from yeah. his desk. Take me through, you know, filming when you saw that in the script, and you also mentioned having a stunt coordinator on set for this one. Uh, yeah, so when I saw the scene, I'm like, okay, interesting. Uh, how are we gonna how are we gonna do this? But um, I don't know what details you want. It wasn't ex extravagant or something special like that. It was just more so that we, we wouldn't hurt each other because we have to synchronize when he lets go of the desk and I don't, um, you know, push too hard. Um, so yeah, what one more questions do you have? Sorry. Yeah, I was curious. So in terms of you know pulling, like, is it? Uh, do you arrange it on a certain count, like one, two, three, and then, you know, kind of he lets go and allows you to pull him backwards? Like, how does that all work uh, and come together? We, we just kind of worked it through it. Uh, like, I would maybe do one or two pulls. We wouldn't count it, but it just kind of felt natural. And at some point, he let go. So it's after a few scenes or takes, we just knew when he was letting go and I was pulling. You did say Edvin is a strong lad, you called him. So it took you a few tries to get him <laughs> off the desk. Yeah. And at some point, we actually did lose our uh, bearing a bit. And we did we did tip over at some point. Uh, we were both on the floor. And I, I, was, I was giggling because, oh, my God. And he was still in character, like super cool. Like just, uh, you know, with the snow globe. And I was like, oh, he's like. So yeah, you're like, throat. sorry, I kind of tackled you just a little bit. <laughs> yes, just a little bit. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but he's such a pro. What emotions did you feel in terms of your character given Malin's role and actually having to be physical with Wilhelm for the first time and having his snow globe break, which was such mm -hmm. an important symbol? Uh, okay, so this scene is super important for, for the script and storyline. Uh, because this is where he finds his independence. He just really gets sick and tired of the bodyguard. He's sick and tired of his mom is being told what to do. And he just lost the globe. So him using Mullen as a leverage. Okay, I want I want them gone. If you want me to be the king, I'm going to be the king now. They need to go away. So it's a super important scene, such a milestone. But for me, when I when I read it, I maybe would have done it a bit differently I would maybe ask John Olaf, like, hey, maybe you can go and check the car and see if it's ready. And I would approach Wilhelm as a bit more like I would have, I would put my uniform inside, like, hey, buddy, like this is, we need to do this. How do we, how do we do this uh, without getting ugly in any way? That's what I would have, you know, that approach I would have done. But as again, it's an important scene and it has to be done. That being said, what do you think her thoughts are towards Jan Olaf? Because obviously oh. he's like a boss kind of to 
to Malin and she can't mm -hmm. really go against what he wants or what he orders her to um, do. I mean, just my gut feeling, she's probably not his number one fan. <laughs> probably not, no. <laughs> As Anna, um, this was another kind of fan submitted question. Where would you have drawn the line um, in terms of being physical with a client? Uh, it's a super hard question because I am there to make them feel safe, not the opposite. Uh, and I've never really heard about this happening in any event, really. I mean, obviously, if you're being shot at, I'm going to grab him and push him in the car. All kinds of different physical things is going to happen. But so, but he's a child as well. So and he's not in charge. So. It's a super hard question and I can't really answer it. What what's wrong and, and what's okay? Because it's just it's just a big gray zone really and I, I can't answer it really. And a lot of times in your position that like, you have to go off instinct and training and whatever kicks in in that moment, right? So it is probably hard to to visualize, although in in Anna's mind, I'm sure you are thinking about care and security mm -hmm. first and foremost. So it's it's such an unfortunate scene, but like you mentioned, so important in the show. Uh, were you in the room or on set when Wilhelm, he spoke with his mother and negotiated to remove the bodyguards? Yes, I was still there uh, because I I don't think Molly would want to leave him alone because he got the globe and you got shattered glass and he's he's sad and probably pissed off. So she kind of just wanted to stick around and see that nothing else bad happens. What do you think her thoughts were when she kind of heard him use Molly and the bodyguards as leverage to, to kind of push them uh, away for a period? Uh, well, she probably had two thoughts was like, oh crap, that's not good because I want to be by his side because I need to take care of him, I need to protect him. But also like, good for you, you know, standing up for yourself. So it was, it was a, it's a two side of the blade, right? Or coin. Uh, so she was proud and sad because she lost, uh, she lost his trust there. How do you think she rebuilt that trust with Wilhelm? Like off camera, do you think she went and apologized to him personally? And what kind of words do you think were, were said uh, for sure I, I mean I if I had that incident while I was working I would approach my client I would throw the speak when spoken to away a bit and just try to like I'm I'm sorry for for what happened I didn't mean it to get out of hand and I hope we can still work together but that's also just being human you know was it sad for you to see that snow globe come off and 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 break, or or was that kind of shot separately? But there was a broken snow globe on the floor during that scene. Uh, it actually did break. Uh, uh, in so that it did kind of fly off that desk. It, it did fly off and it did break uh, at one point of the in throughout the scenes. Uh, so it was just uh, we we could react towards that like naturally as well. So that was good. Obviously not good, but we could, you know, we could, we can act towards it. Yeah, the weight of of having all of that, like that frog and all of that, whatever kind of liquid it is, come out. Mm -hmm. um, what did it mean to Malin to have Wilhelm come to her door at the gatehouse and ask her to drive him to um, to Simon's, especially after that incident? Mm -hmm. So when I read the script, I was like, yes, yes, which means that uh, her apology that we didn't see it was with you speculating uh it came through and he engages her you know comes for her favor and so the circle of trust is renew or rebuild so i think that meant a lot to her uh yeah so she was really happy about it yep yeah, i just didn't yeah, grab my coat let's go how special is it and i really love that she doesn't call him crown prince you know she answers the door she calls him wilhelm um, mm -hmm. she doesn't see him as just being you know this royal um family member next in line uh yeah because why would i because he just wants to be normal like you and me he doesn't want to be called your highness or uh, whatever he just want to be a person and that's what security is also about is it's not about being like physically safe it's, a, it's about feeling safe and how, again, you need to make them feel comfortable with you. And you, and how do you do that? Well, you don't call them by them titles. And there was just the two of them. Why would you call him the crown prince? She was like, hey, really, what's up? Let me help you. 
I'm sure that's something Jan Olaf would do, though. <laughs> Oh yeah, Just for sure. calling Yeah, by the yeah, titles. yeah, Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Malin was present. You were present during the Jubilee ceremony. So what reaction did you have personally hearing Edwin as Wilhelm give that important speech? Uh, probably similar to when he stood up towards his mom on the phone call after the snow globe. Like, good for him. Because that's what I would have done. Because I see myself a lot in these teenager or young adults, like just being stubborn. It's my way or the highway. Just unruly and a bit like, okay, this is going to happen now. And he made it happen. So when he did that, Molly was probably like, yeah, yeah, good for him. I feel like Mullen's job might get a little harder, though. Um, what kind of implications do you think it might have without obviously giving things away now that you know some scripts? But for the royal court and royal family, there was the initial scandal, but this is basically another layer to to his story and, and obviously um, of impacts, affects the royal family. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the implications... are not necessarily as big as they have to be because they obviously have a successor in mind and that's August. So whether Willem uh, get kids or not, it doesn't matter because they have, they have a second plan. They have a plan B for that. Uh, but obviously it's going to be a big media storm about his sexuality. So, I mean, the main thing that they need to do is just take the focus off that and just focus on his duties as a crown prince, as a king to be. So to just like move it. towards something positive or I mean having a different sexuality doesn't mean it's a negative thing but it's a big diversity and people don't always think the same you know It will be interesting for sure to see how that is handled uh, next season. But Malin has spent a considerable amount of time at Halerska uh, mm -hmm. watching over Wilhelm. What impressed you about the Halerska set? Because you spent a lot of time there during your scenes. Uh, I mean, I mean, there's definitely some some beautiful rooms and uh, and stuff. But the the thing that impresses me most is the cast and crew and how they make it all possible. They it's just not a great house or a big castle. It's what you put in it, the love and heart and the hard work and dedication towards it. But if I have to pick, uh, there is one room uh, where there is a big the big piano, and I think it was at Eric Eric's memorial, and Simon is singing. And I was I was in the room as well. I don't think I was on camera very much or at all, actually. But it was just like everybody was there and they were they were mourning. I was actually but there was tears coming out of my eyes when Simon was singing. And it was just such a beautiful set. And I'm like, Anna, get your act together. You can't cry. So, yeah, it was um, it was a good set. So you have heard Omar singing, um, very impressed with his voice and his music. Oh, my God. He's just like a little Brian from Brexit Boys, but probably better. <laughs> I'm sure that, that that's the utmost compliment coming from you. Better than the Backstreet yeah. Boys. One hundred. Yeah. That, but yeah, it's just when he sings, everybody just kind of, but because it's just a crowded production, everybody's doing wardrobe, it's makeup and everybody's rushing somewhere. And then all of a sudden, Omar starts to sing. And everybody just kind of freezes because it's such an angelic experience to hear him sing. It's, even if it's just a, a line or two, it's just like, wow, he can sing. And then everybody just starts going about their business again. So it's like he fills the room for that that fleeting moment where yes. he's singing. And yeah, yeah it's, I'm sure it's such a gift. A lot of people have yet to hear him sing live, but you have. And oh, yeah. hopefully, you know, more tours in his future. But um, it's Kager, Kagerholm Slot, right? The mm -hmm. castle that's filmed there. They don't have castles like that where I'm from. So I think no. it might be a bit more common like in Sweden and, and Europe, Nordic areas. But yeah, it's it looks like such a... interesting place a lot of different hidden pockets obviously a lot of land to to look through I, I wanted to talk about your favorite characters in the show which you've said are August mm -hmm. and Madison so yeah can you elaborate on why and maybe a bit on Malte mm -hmm. and Natalie's performances that make you enjoy their characters so much uh okay so Malte is uh, portraying August and obviously August has he like he's different from the other guys because his character has a lot of depths and uh, I mean he's suffering from eating disorder he's you know being pressured from the from the court that maybe he's the new successor section and nobody really likes him he does not handle it and his mother is broke he can't pay the fee for the school so he's just like a big vacuum that he needs to just live and breathe in and he's struggling so that just makes him so much older 
than the other characters. And he's not a good person, but he just wants to be a good, you know, it's just everything he does, it just kind of explodes. Uh, and I think Malta just puts, he, he just nails it, uh, um, definitely. And whereas go for Madison, she's just a copy of myself when I was uh, her age. Uh, you know, I, I, I had a mohawk, so I wasn't, I was a bit more extreme, but being stubborn and talks English all the time, I, I did that as a kid as well. And uh, she does it for natural reasons. I did it because I thought it was fun. Uh, and just, you know, makeup and um, just her character speaks to me. And Natalie is, she's she's also super friendly. Uh, she's like, hey, Anna, do, do you ride a motorcycle? Because I ride a motorcycle. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I need to get, I need to get a ride. I'm like, well, you need a helmet, security, and you need a jacket. And you need, I'm like, okay, man, maybe I can just like do a little ride in the courtyard. I'm like, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, so she's just great. Love her. It's nice that you've been able to to connect a bit with some of this cast. Uh, most of your scenes are shared with Edvin, who you mentioned was always friendly, took the time to talk to you. So um, without, you know, diving into any kind of personal conversations, like what did you kind of discuss generally and maybe learn about each other? Because obviously this is the first time you've worked with any of this cast. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so since um, Edvin is the star of the show, He's also the VIP. So I also kind of apply my past experience here, like speak when spoken to, right? Because he has so much. He works the longest being there in dawn and leaving at dusk, talking to the director, a gazillion lines to remember and interact with all his friends on set. So I just kind of like, I leave him be, like speak when spoken to. But when we do, when we are alone a bit, um, I mean, I, yeah, sure. I ask him like, how was your weekend or what are you doing this weekend? But I don't pry because he is, he's just so big right now. And you know, he probably just wants to be a bit, you know, uh, so normally he's the one who asks me questions like, oh, she, I remember him asking about my security and, and stuff like that. And, and that's fine. So we kind of keep it a bit like low key. It's, it kind of seeps into, you know, filming life in terms of a bit of those boundaries. But I think it's nice that he was curious to hear about, yeah. you know, your past work and history. Um, what can you say about how committed this young cast is to oh their work? God. Like not only Edvin, but um, like Omar, Malte, uh, Nikita, Frida, having been on set and kind of observed them over these past two seasons. Uh, it's just, um, they are so hardworking. But you can really tell that they are having fun as well. Uh, and it's just not, you know, the, the cast is the extras as well. Everybody just, just love what they're doing and they're working long hours. And sometimes when the director yells cut and sometimes when you're not paying attention, you're drinking your coffee because you're not in the scene. It's like, well, didn't she yell cut? Why are they still laughing? Because they just like, they just, there's the, the gray zones where they're on camera or not camera they're just having so much fun and that just impresses me and I and I sometimes I feel like I miss that like wow how how are they doing this but I guess the perks of being 20 I don't know you're like young people <laughs> I remember young that people, time always happy <laughs> it's so nice that it kind of um that energy comes through on camera but also on set that uh, you've yeah. given praise to the makeup and wardrobe ladies who you've become friends yeah. with during production how much fun is it to spend your or beginning and end of your day with them in the trailers um uh, okay so yeah um like coming because no, sometimes uh, I come directly from my from my normal job uh, in the late afternoon and maybe I had a, a long day and I'm and then I get to sit here in front of the mirror and I have a, a woman just making me pretty again. She's braiding my hair. I'm drinking coffee. And not only is she making me pretty, but she's also talking to me like, how was your day or what's the plans? And I can, it's just a whole social interaction. I think maybe women in, enjoy a bit more than men, but I love it. And I mean, she, just the whole bartender experience is the only thing that's missing is a glass of wine. Obviously we can't do that, but it's just, I love that time. It's just, it's just for half an hour, 45 minutes, but it's, it's just, I, oh, it's so good. So good. It's almost like a little coffee chat, right? And yes. sometimes we yes. don't get the time for those in the day. Um, and you mentioned they pamper you. They even took in your suggestions of changing the bun to the yeah. braid from seasons yeah. one to two. So I'm sure that's something you were very happy about. Yeah, because I, I was like, maybe we can do something different than the bun. They were like, yes, because that bun was hard work. 
because they need to make it exactly the same all the time. Uh, so it was just, a, a, yeah, let's do something different. Yeah, we all agree. Yeah, something different. Yeah. What can you say about the woman creatives behind the scenes in terms of like Lisa, Roshta, any of the directors, producers? Like, did you have any kind of interactions with them um, at all? And what do you find in general, even just as a fan watching the show about their work and their creativity? Uh, okay, so I, I only got the opportunity to meet Lisa once and it was only like for like 30, 40 seconds in between scenes. It was actually in the Jubileum uh, at the end of season two. Uh, so I got a face to her, um, or on her, sorry. And obviously Royda, I got to meet a bit more because she was the director. And I mean, there, I mean, I don't, I don't really need to say anything else than look at what they're creating. Uh, they're just, they're just writing down history here and the world is watching and I, I have nothing else to, you know, to give them, to praise them. It's just, yeah, it's amazing. And to see the show receive um, a number of accolades, especially over the past year, is so incredible because, like you mentioned, the work they're doing is really important. The stories they're telling. Um, most of your role is non-speaking, but obviously when you're on set, a lot of directors, a lot of movement. What kind of directions or prompts were you given in your scenes? Uh, okay, obviously Molin is not is talk talking a lot. Uh, and... I don't get a lot of direction because I just kind of do what Molly normally would do. Uh, and sometimes I remember Royda even asking me, like, hey, Sana, what would Molly do here? Would you go this way or would you go that way? Or would you go first or after? So it's, it's an open dialogue. But sometimes it's just like, maybe Molly does this. And Royda's like, no, no, it would be prettier if you walk there. So it's it was a bit more open dialogue. Uh, and it was really fun that she would actually ask me, like, what would Molly do? Okay, here's what Molly would do. Lisa Ambjorn has said that Molly is named after her childhood best friend who is now in the military. So was this a significance that you found special? I had no idea, actually. Uh, so my initial thoughts on that fact would be like, well, well then I'm, I'm very humbled that I get to betray one of her, you know, longtime friends. Uh, and that I, and so I'm just super proud, like, okay, yeah. That's great. I think it has a lot to say about, you know, strong kind of female role models and of mm -hmm. which you yourself are also one. Um, we'll talk about season three, obviously, no spoilers <laughs> to be had here, but no your first day on set uh, was, I think, April 4th. You posted um, a quick snapshot selfie on Tumblr. How excited were you to be back? And is it, you know, bittersweet knowing it's the final season now? Uh, yeah, I was super nervous that I wasn't going to get the, the call for the next season. I'm like, hello, I actually reached out to production. Are we doing another season? Because, you know, let's start planning because I got a job. And, and so I was super excited. Like, yes, we want you. And I'm like, yes. Okay, here we go. So I was excited. Yeah. Did you have any nerves that you potentially wouldn't be back just because you don't know the direction that they'd be going in? Yeah, but I mean, you should never assume that you're always going to be invited to anything. You know, so maybe that's a bit of negative side or a pessimistic, uh, you know, route to choose in life. But yeah, I was, I didn't, I didn't assume anything. I was just like, you know, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, cautiously optimistic, I guess yeah. you would call it before you read the scripts, but you hope to see Malin smile more, maybe interact with some of the younger cast. So could you expand a bit on those ideas? Like what kinds of scenes in your mind did you want to see Malin be a part of, or maybe what characters you might've liked to see her interact with more? Okay. So when I see Malin on, on the screen or myself, I think to myself, wow, she is super stiff. Like is this that's what I look like when I work. So like I don't I don't want any major interactions. Just like maybe smile a bit more and say hi and uh, you know, just normal human stuff because she's a bit too too much of a robot right now. But I, I get it because you want that big black and white body card teenager. It's, it's supposed to be a bit of a gap there. In terms of other characters, like, do you hope that she gets to interact with uh, August and Madison because you like those characters? Or are there anyone else you just, in general, would like to work with more? I mean, obviously, Madison, I would love to do more scenes with her. But then again, I would love to do more scenes with the entire cast. But Marlin is, 
uh, not always around and she can't always be around because some of the scenes would just be stupid with her standing there like oh uh so but yeah i would love to do more uh, scenes with everybody in general yeah you did tease uh, someone asked you about the scripts and I feel like you can't do this because you know it's going to send fans into a frenzy but you did read some juicy stuff yep. you had said and um, you saw the reaction to that yeah. <laughs> just two words that are juicy stuff and it it will send fans into a frenzy on what exactly you mean yeah well yep yeah. I just yep yeah. it's 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 gonna be a, a good season um uh, hands down and yeah Exactly. Yeah, the, the final chapter, unfortunately, I know fans are dreading that, but just I'm um, grateful that you get to be a part of this. Everyone mm -hmm. hopefully comes back. Um, you talked about how interesting it would be to have a spinoff focused on the bodyguards and security of the royal family. Can you expand on maybe what you'd like to see in their day to day life and maybe what other characters would be featured, um, things like that? Yeah, OK, so I, I mentioned it once. Uh, I mentioned it once, but so it's more like of a like when when I interact with the rest of the crew, like I should be a Molly spin-off. So it's everybody else kind of like, okay, yeah, maybe I haven't really thought about it because uh but I mean what could be interesting in Molly like in Molly's life, like I said, there's there's gonna be some friction with her normal social life with spouses because she has to be away and there's a lot of secrecy. And I think there's a whole lot of drama behind Molly that could be like with her wife, maybe she's pregnant and she needs to take Wilhelm to at the end at the other side of the world or whatnot. It could be it the sky's the limit on what could happen with the border because she's just a person as well. I would watch that spinoff for sure. I feel like yeah. you know some of these service roles you don't get to see um, the work that they put into. It. Obviously, there's so much to be said about you know the character of Wilhelm, the royal family that we like to focus on. But like you mentioned, there could be a lot in the personal life that um, she can't just take into her job. Obviously, she has to maintain that professionalism. Mm -hmm. But there could be inner turmoil. So time will tell if a spinoff of Malin is what you'd like to see. Feel free to let let everyone know yeah, um, maybe they'll meant, cast me for it who knows <laughs> you're like please cast me for it yeah. I mean <laughs> this is your character this is you you mentioned you know fan support something that you've still been so surprised with so tell me a bit about that and uh, was there a moment you first realized like when was the moment you first realized that people were actually interested in Malin and what you have to say as Anna okay so I think that was after they released the first season it was actually my sister. She sent me a link to a Tumblr uh, post. And it was like about, oh, we want a, a permanent ring press with Malin. And this was three years ago. And I'm like, why? Who would who would want to do that? It's just, just me. And so I kind of I created a Tumblr account and asked Malin. I was lurking in the shadows. I didn't really announce myself. I just kind of browse and see what's out there. And then after season two was released, I just kind of, I kind of announced myself like, okay, guys, here I am. If you have any questions, direct them towards me. Uh, and I don't have a lot of followers. I have like 500, but it's just, I think, listen to me. They talk to me and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And I love that in a lot of like the questions and answers, you and other people also leave comments. So there's so much more engagement um, past just that initial ask and answer uh, why do you think fans have connected with the show and Wilhelm and Simon's story in particular okay so it's a fairly hard and easy question that you ask but what is life all about it's about love right it's about feeling connected towards uh, another person even if it's a boyfriend girlfriend is a dog or is it a family member that is what love is all about have you seen the movie Interstellar? And I mean, that whole movie, it's about that the world is dying and this astronaut needs to save the world and they go out in the universe. Uh, and there's one of the astronauts, she wants to go to a, a planet that sends out good data for them. Maybe they can stay there. Uh, but there's also a different planet that sends even better data out. So the astronauts are, are discussing, okay, which planet should we choose? And she wants to go to the second best planet because... Her boy, her, her husband is there, right? He traveled out 10 years ago. And so she gets called on that, but this, you only want to go there because it's your husband. And she has this major speech about how love, you know, travels through space and time. And 
like she, it brought her all the way across the universe. She wants to go there. And I just that is just what it's all about, love and how powerful it is. And really like um, protecting that love and you mention it, you know, it's something so fundamental to our existence. And so yeah. um, I'm so enamored with, you know, this story and how well it's told and acted. Uh, fans look up to you. Anna, not only for your character, but also your career choices and how honest you are in your engagement online. Did you ever have doubts about sharing more of, you know, your life on a public platform coming out of the Tumblr lurking shadows? Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, I did actually create an Instagram account as well to complement Tumblr, but I got no, it's just, uh, it was too much because I am very private normally. I have I have Facebook, I have Instagram, all under different names. So it's just my friends there. So I was a bit hesitant, uh, but Tumblr was it's a different society a bit. It's just maybe I don't want to say the crowd is older, but it's it's just different. And I don't think a lot of mainstream media sees it the way I see it. So um, so yeah, I choose to to stay on Tumblr for now. Yeah, it's sort of secret, but not. <laughs> You're, you're still around. I'm sure people can find you. I know people have talked about it um, on Twitter, which you are not on and we'll talk about in just a second. But um, you did have like this raw post about, you know, panic attacks and migraine episodes. So I did read through that. I have to say thank you for, you know, being so I want to say brutally honest yeah. um, with your life and sharing that. I think people can relate. And it's again, it's like a stigma thing about, you know, mental health and pain and what people go through that is not always talked about. So Tumblr you think is a good platform to kind of share that uh when I made that post I just kind of got out of the 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 attack or episode and I was just so angry normally I'm a bit humbled with it because the sun is shining so much brighter and the, the air is so much fresher once you get out of that black hole but this time I was just angry with how my body is wired so I wanted to make an angry rant on on somewhere and then I choose Tumblr there but then I also realized that if I can reach out to someone with this, maybe suffers a bit as well, and they kind of take the comfort in that they're not alone. Uh, it was just, if I just, you know, maybe change one person's mind or felt a bit more e at ease at their troubles, you know, that's, that's, that's all I need. Well, we appreciate the real unfiltered look. Um, other things on your Tumblr, of course, you mentioned your musical tastes, which I have to note is quite the range because you have like Billie Eilish and Lady Gaga, but then yeah. um, Infected Mushroom, you have the In Flames, Twisted Sister, like the heavy metal. So mm -hmm. would you say that you're a fan of all genres or like if you had to pick one or is it just too difficult for you? Uh, I would say rock and roll for sure, like Metallica in Flames and uh, like musical metal or instrument. Like uh, it needs to be melodic metal. Melodic metal is good. Uh, but so it's just easier if I say the things that I don't like, which is not so much into R&B and jazz. Uh, but the rest is just like, bring it, bring it. Won't find Anna at a jazz club anytime soon. No, not really. <laughs> no, maybe if it's a cute bartender, I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> Have you received any guidance from the Young Rose production on interacting with fans, what you maybe can or should not be sharing or talking about? Uh, no, not uh, like personal directions. I think it's it, it goes a bit close to what I do for a normal job with being a bodyguard. Like everything is need to know basics and you know you keep your your stuff to yourself uh and obviously we signed an nda agreement and we do get some friendly reminders that the whole cast and crew like every now and then like hey guys be careful with social medias but but nothing like towards me I have noticed that, you know, especially during production, it gets a lot more silent on yes. cast members' ends, yes. obviously. But I'm sure once uh, we'll hear once the season is wrapped and then again, there'll be the whole like, oh, my gosh, when is this coming out? Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about Thanksgiving because you were invited to Thanksgiving from some fans on the Tumblr community. So describe that experience and what has become a bit more of a, an actual friendship outside of being online. Uh, okay, so shout out to Nicole because she's that friend. I'm actually going to her on a barbecue when we're done with the interview. Uh, um, she's she's a she's a great girl. Uh, I I love her to bits. 
Uh, but yeah, she invited me to uh, this uh, like this party on Tumblr, and when I read it, spider senses. I'm like, oh, it's a it's an online creep who wants to murder me. Uh, but then I was like, hey Anna, maybe you should just ease up a bit. So I went. So I went to the party, and when they let me in, and I just kind of see her, and she's like, not in a million years what I would expect that Molly would be at my doorstep. Uh, so she was just super excited and we had a good talk and uh, at the end of the evening it was just we kind of leveled with each other and it was just two persons and then we just kind of stuck with each other uh we'll go through twitter now so i did mm -hmm. send you some tweets that we're gonna look at and okay. um again and unfortunately it's not on twitter <laughs> but hopefully in the future you never know never say never never say never molly is on a03 it's true she told me i don't get it i don't get this one so ao3 is archive of our own which is a platform for fan fiction so let's oh, talk sure. about fan fiction because you have answered uh questions about this on tumblr i think you have read some fan fiction about one, yeah. Malin. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on those especially people creating like again their own stories backstories for her uh, once again, I'm just amazed that uh, people are taking interest in Malin because she's such a small character. And it's also kind of cool that I get to interact with them because I I portray her. So it's just a, like a mutual feeling of like, okay, this is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, fan fiction is just amazing. But yeah, it's cool. Did you show any of your friends and family that fan fiction? <laughs> is that something uh, that you've been keeping? No, because the, the young royal crowds uh, is a bit younger. I mean, I don't think any of my friends has seen the show. Uh, I mean, we have one girl at the office when she realized I was acting Molly. She's like, oh, my God, really? But that's that's pretty much the extent of it and how... In that voice, too? <laughs> pretty much. She just almost choked on her coffee when she realized it was Molly sitting in front of her because she's a huge fan. Uh, but that's as far as it goes with my, my private life. And they don't really like, okay, yeah, some sort of show on the app. We don't, okay. I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I have seen this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, she was in my way and I kind of, I needed to keep pace with the uh, with the villa. So I'm like, yeah, move, move, I need to come through. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, a fun, it's a good one. That's actually funny. I honestly did not notice that the first time I watched it. So seeing that clip and you can actually see it's um, Felicia, right? Her face, how she reacts to you kind of nudging her out of the way. Yeah, because she was actually in my way. And she, because when we did the scenes, she was never in my way. And in the other scenes, when, we, when we, we cut through it. And then in one scene, she was just like, okay, we didn't rehearse this. Excuse me. So it was an okay, actual. Okay, so it wasn't actually yeah, like no, scripted there. Oh, no. that, that's so funny that it, it found its way in. Yeah, it, it found itself in, and it felt natural because that's what Molly would do. Because like you, you need to move, you know, move. And that's definitely how Stella would react as well. Yeah. I think so. On all accounts, it was that was the one, a hundred percent. But I think everybody would react to when a, a bodyguard moves and kind of pushes them around like, like oh, what just happened? I think everybody would react like that. Uh, August comes up to Villa's room every day and I refuse him entry every time. Give the pleasure. Well, it was a pleasure. It was, it was a fun scene to, to do, actually. Yeah. You mentioned that this was your favorite scene in season one. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been a while, but is there anything that you remember from filming or why was that scene so memorable for you? Uh, because normally I don't get to interact with every, every, anyone else except for uh, Edwin or, or Wilhelm. Uh, and when I do interact with him, it's more of a small comments like, okay, you know, I'm going to grab your bags or something like that. So when I actually got to interact with a different actor, uh, you know, a lot of cameras around and it was sort of a funny scene and we just, and when the minute the director calls cut and everybody just starts laughing uh, like the crew, everybody, everybody's laughing and I'm like, I make people laugh this is amazing and Malin, what's funny is I mean, August is family, obviously but um, why do you think she was so strict on not letting him in the room to see Wilhelm I don't know uh, maybe she get bad vibes from him. Uh, maybe he's a bad influence or maybe Willem is like no visitors. Like nobody, nobody's coming in. And maybe that's why we don't know. 
Um, so, you know, use your imagination. Imagine in season three, there is a parallel to season one where Will men are in Villa's room in the morning and Molly calls into them uh, to get ready. And they both go attack Molly this time because they're not a secret anymore. Yeah, imagine that would have been, Molly would be like, wait, what? Uh, but yeah, okay, I get it. Uh, they're official now. Yeah, that's good. Because I mean, she, she must know, right? Uh, I mean, in, in season, um, in season one, when, you know, she's outside and she says um, breakfast or something like mm -hmm. that. She she knows. I mean, she knows that they're both in there. Yeah, I mean, if she doesn't know, she's probably not doing her job very well. So, <laughs> yeah, I would say she knows. I mean, this would be a nice scene, I think. Would you say that would be nice to see? Yeah, of course. Small interactions is uh, is great. And it would just be like a, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, because they're, yeah, okay, I get it now, yeah, so. <laughs> kind yeah. of reaffirming, yeah. Yeah. Molly is my favorite young royal characters. Uh, is she super duper important to the plot? No, but she's so pretty. Oh, who's Mada? I love this person. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. I, yeah, yeah. It makes me happy. I think that's a nice kind of tweet to end those off on. I wanted to talk about before we go your sleeve of tattoos because you have which one? Quite... I have two sleeves. <laughs> you have two sleeves. Um, yeah. I love that you have the Game of Thrones shirt, the Vikings uh, images yeah. in the back. Um, so many of your tattoos are pop culture related. So can you share the stories behind a couple of them and why they are important to you? Uh, okay, so I have uh, the Lord of the Rings one here. I actually have my name in Quenya, which is the Elvish, El Elvish language, and the Tree of Gondor, uh, because uh, I read Lord of the Rings when I was young. I understand half of it because it was written in Old Swedish or Old English. I don't remember, but just love the show. Love the, not, not the show, but the movies, the books. It's just like I was a super fan as a girl, and that's why I have them. And then I have uh, the wall from, from Game of Thrones here as well. Uh, because I, I sort of fell in love with the, the Night's Watch, with how their watch never ends. And it's just kind of like, with me being a, a insecurity, like you never stop working. It's just you're always there, uh, even though you're not working. Uh, so I wanted to kind of portray Game of Thrones, but also a bit of a part of me as well. I love that. And um, there's also, I think you've said Lamb Before Time, Gladiator, Vikings mm -hmm. so you've really yeah. also like embraced the female warriors that Nordic heritage um we have a couple of wild card questions for you oh, can you okay. name all the members of the fellowship of the ring okay we have Ian McKellen Viggo Bortesen uh you're giving yeah. the actors <laughs> names I'll oh, mostly we'll go oh, with the characters oh, but okay, I would yeah. name them both <laughs> uh, okay so Ian is uh Gandalf uh, Viggo Mortensen is uh Aragorn and then we have uh, Sean Bean, which is Boromir, and also Eddard Star from Game of Thrones, but whatever. And then we have Dominic Monaghan, who plays one of the Hobbits, which is Mary. And then Billy Boyd is Pippin. And then Samwise Gammy is played by Billy, o no, Billy Austin? Ian? Bill, Bill, I think his name is Billy Austin. So, well, Sam is my favorite character. And did I mention all the four Hobbits now? I no, and there's Fro Frodo, duh, Elijah Wood. And then we have uh, the elf. He is called Legolas, and he's played by that young stallion. What's, uh, I can't remember his name now. I know his name. Everybody knows his name. Oh, well, he's in Pirates of Caribbean anyway. Uh, is, is that all of them? I think you're missing a hobbit. I'm missing a hobbit. Frodo, Sam, Mary, Pippin, uh, Dominic, Billy Boyd. Billy Boyd! Uh, Billy Boy like, plays Pippin, yes. And 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 Sam is played by. I don't. I can't remember his name. I you know got his by... last name. You got his last name. Yeah, Austin, Sean Austin. Yeah, Sean Austin. Yes, yeah, Sean Austin. and then um, I think you're missing Legolas. What's one his of name? his uh, Orlando Bloom. Gimli. And then Legolas is Gimli. Yeah. Uh, and he is played by Ron Juice, uh, Ron uh, John Riz Davis. 
yes. he was actually one of the that was members. so impressive honestly because when i asked that question people just throw out the characters names but you do know the actors as well you know and i actually did meet the dominic monaghan at one point they were doing a, a, a series in, in stockholm and i was one of the police extras as well so i did get to meet him that was fun Final question for you. If you could be any ice cream flavor, which would you be and why? Oh, wow. That's a weird question. I love chocolate. You can put chocolate in everything, like basically everything. You can put it in your coffee. You can put it in your ice cream. You can put chocolate on chocolate. You can put chocolate in the in the chocolate cocoa. You can, I, So, yeah, chocolate. Yeah. Because it goes with everything. Um, that's yeah. such a good way to end things off. Thank you so much, Anna, for taking the time to chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Of course. For all those watching, make sure to catch Anna in Young Royal Season 1 and 2, Season 3 upcoming on Netflix. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys. See ya.